Good morning from my side as well. You reached the top of IEC 61850, and this is testing. And it's not by accident that we have this at the end, because the, there really comes in a lot of the topics we discussed so far, and I really try to introduce this for you and to really do it with you together, that you have an idea of what testing in IEC 61850 means, what are the challenges, and what is that what we want to do. So we will discuss what to test, why to test, and how to test. So we will talk about some definitions from the standard. We will look into that, what we heard during the last 24 hours. And I will also show you solutions available we also want to try out during the workshop together. So there is so many about testing. Even when you look into 61850, you will see the word conformance testing, performance testing. You will also hear functional testing, what has to be done during factory acceptance testing, as well as on-site acceptance testing. And of course, we all know that we have to do routine testing. So this is business for some of you here also in the room, and of course also business for us, because there are test sets used. And so there are many possi possibilities. And when we look into the standard, I told you that we are at the end, so we reach now the final part. So it's the part 10 of the standard describing some kind of cast testing, but this is that what is called conformance testing. This is something that's not done by us, it's not done by you. This is done by a certified institute like DNV or Kima or even some vendors have the possibility to do this. And there are certifi certificates issued and they show the product has not shown to be non-conforming to. So this is a very nice sentence and it really helps you, not really, but it's good to have it. And we, of course, see every device we are using is certified somehow. And that's why we know it's conformant to IC61850. So this is the base. But of course, it's not sufficient. You still have to do some tests in your substation. So we are looking further into the standard and looking, maybe we find some other terms about testing. And then something come, comes in what we call performance testing. So what does this mean? The standard defines some requirements, what has to be done regarding performance. How fast functionalities, how fast communication should be done. So you see that we here have the two devices. They have a communication stack there inside. They are communicating together. Yeah? And there is some time that we need for that. So the application will need some time, the stack itself, then the network, we already have been talking about that, and you will see it later, how long it takes to transmit information. And then, for instance, when we also perform the test with a test set, then we also have there an own time inside. And so the standard describes something like an overall transmission time, overall transfer time, and there are requirements depending from that what's done with the message, is it a high, high important uh, trip message, or is it just something used for other purposes? So it, it, the fastest should be three milliseconds, just to give you an idea what we are talking about. And this is the final <coughs> part of the standard. So there is already something in, and of course this has to be tested in your application, in your substation. So um, if we now go into the details, then I just do this here as a short repetition. Then we have to think what we heard during the last day. <coughs> what is really done in communication in IC61? <coughs> and because we have the two different main concepts, uh, you heard so what we call client server services. That what is used for all kind of SCADA communication, for the reports we heard, control, you remember select before operate and so on. So this is something that is done with a point-to-point -point connection, and this is completely different compared with that what we are doing with the goods and with the sampled values, what we call real-time communication, because here we communicate quite quickly, and one device is publishing something, and everybody connected to the substation, and if the switches are not configured wrong, will receive the information, and you can use it also for testing. So this are completely different uh, styles, and this are also uh, will cause in different requirements <coughs> for the testing equipment we are going to use, and I will explain it to you in detail. So this is the base and the repetition of that, what we did, 
And now let's look into such a substation. So I show you here an example. Um, so just start here on the left hand side. So you see the scalar system, for instance, the copper data, as we heard it today in the morning. We have IEDs of different vendors communicating friendly together, and they are sharing information. And then we have, in that case, a single network. So just to repeat the terms, process bus and station bus are there together. So we have now gooses issued here by the, by the uh, protection devices, for instance. It might be that there are also merchant units uh, publishing the sampled values here over the network. And now we want to start there with the testing to do something. And now it's just that we have the different possibilities. So if we are working with the goose, then we receive it everywhere free of charge. And we can use it also for testing, for recording, for supervision. And this also works with the sampled values. This, of course, is a main advantage. Every measurement value is available in the entire substation. Quite nice for testing, no thinking about burden and anything else. So it's quite easy. The other possibility is that, for instance, the scalar system here communicates with the IED for control point to point uh, using TCP IP. So we really have to work here um, <coughs> with um, different tools. If we, want to, if we want to test this, this means, for instance, if we want to play the SCADA system, I have to establish an own IP connection to the server. So I'm playing the client, yeah, because it might be that it's not an operation at the moment, and then I can try to test what's going on here in the server, for instance, perform the control, and so on. And I also have possibilities with special devices that I can also listening to this point-to-point -point traffic, if there is a mirror port configured or there is a tab in between, then I can also visualize that. So this is a task done by a test client in a substation, connected to, that, um, to the port and then com communicating point-to-point. -point. This was one task where we started with. We have this their product here, you see the ID scout for a long time, and this is now performing exactly those tasks. This software is also capable to handle Goose, so you can uh, visualize the Goose because you receive it anyway, you connect your computer, and you can work with that. But the next task is then to talk about protection testing. What do you do if you want to connect the test set? There was just a question now, um, how to connect the test set to that network. Yeah, so there is an Ethernet port, and you connect the two, and then you can inject the values, for instance, the values, and you receive the Goose to, um, to check how fast the relay responses. This is something you remember the picture from Fred. We also did for the first time 10 years ago, so it's also very well established. But we will see it's not sufficient when we look into the details. And this is that what we are going to do now to do a little bit more about the standard, the standard background uh, in ISC 61850, how to do now this functional testing. And now I can tell you that the fun really starts. Uh, before that, just a short how it is realized with the goose, as I showed it you here. So we have there quite a simple module that is really doing this. Uh, bringing together the Goose subscriptions and the Goose simulation, and this is mapped to binary inputs, and then you can perform the test as you did it 100 years ago. Binary input number one is the trip, and binary input number two is the startup. This is something we have there, and this is also available for the sampled values, where we can publish sampled values there over the network, and you have, can use them for testing. You remember the picture Fred showed you. So this is the 92LE that is supported, and we can issue the sampled values as we issue the conventional analogs. So this is something for a long time, but now let's look into that what we are calling the functional testing. So we have to understand how do I perform protection testing now. I told you it starts with the story. We are issuing sampled values, for instance, or conventional analogs, and I receive the goose information. This is the same as we did it with the copper wire in the past. So it started. Um, but now we have to discuss how this can be done with our IEC 61850 devices. So IEC 61850 testing. The people know, OK, this is a network standard, so there are some Ethernet cables. I want to do protection testing. So it can be not that easy as I did it in the past 
if I don't want to use a signal, a binary trip, um, or if I want to inject the analog values, I cannot simply work with test plugs. So this is something that worked very well in the past, but with Ethernet cable it's not that easy because it's not possible just to unplug the cable because in that case you do not receive, for instance, the goose anymore. Of course, if you have uh, the copper data scaler system, there are possibilities you have another goose there, but anyway, for sampled values, you cannot just do it like this because then at that moment, you, for instance, your differential protection will block or your um, uh, reverse blocking scheme will block or whatever. So it's not possible just to unplug. Yeah? So that's why we need other possibilities to do this. And when we discuss with the people, the people say, yeah, I know there is a test bit in IC61850. <coughs> and this sounds really great because it's something that we had already in the 103, a little test indication, and then the SCADA system, for instance, it is not uh, showing the information anymore, and it sounds really good. But just to remember, we are doing IC61850. So the things are a little bit more complex as it was before. And here, it's really complex. So the standard says every little logical node, you remember, for instance, there's an example here, P this one, so it's the set one um, for a protection functionality can be set to this test mode. So you can do it, for instance, you can set the zone one you want to put into test and the zone two you want to keep in normal operation. So it's really possible. If it makes sense, it's something you can discuss, but anyway, it's possible. Additionally, you remember the structure that we defined. It's also possible to set an entire logical device to the test mode. So you say, okay, now the entire distance protection or the Siemens devices, every single protection function is an own logical device, or you have a huge one combining everything. So you can set this device also to a test mode. Yeah? So this is one thing that we have in the standard. And additionally, we do not just have a single mode called test, we have five different modes. So every functionality can be on, on blocked, test, test blocked and off. So you can for every function decide what should it be. Should it be switched on or off? So the standard says you really can define what, and it should work as a filter. What do you want to do? Do you want to have it in test? Do you want to have it on or off? and then it will consider what kind of information will be used. So this was introduced already with edition one, and I can tell you it really caused confusions because it's quite complex how it is done. So when we now look into the details, just to explain it to you how it works, just try to imagine, so you have your IED with the single, a single um, logical nodes inside, so it can be on, this it means that in that case, it will only work with the information that are not test related. It will work with the normal information. When you set it to test, yeah, in that moment, then it will work only with that information that are indicated as test. Yeah? So this really helps to differentiate where you want to work with. And you also can decide if you are using, for instance, this test blocked that you avoid that the circuit breaker drips, for instance. So that's why we have also this mode. So you can say, I want to perform the test, <laughs> and I want to check, does the device work properly, but I don't want that for every um, signal I stimulate the circuit breaker drips. So that's why we have here also this test blocked inside. So this is the definition as it is in the standard. So we have five different modes, and they can be combined. When we have a look, and it's just for your reference to show you how it is defined in the standard, so if you can do it for the single mode, uh, for the single node, and as well for the entire logical device, then there might happen a resulting behavior, as they call it. So of course, if, for instance, the logical node is in test mode and the device itself is kept on, then the resulting behavior should be test. So this is something that's defined in the standard, and there are some much more um, definitions in the standard how all this should work together. Yeah? What should be done in case of test and not? I just have here the explanation for your reference as it is defined in the standard. This was changed several times because it's quite complex and they made out of it a table. 
that is really defining what should be done in case of the different modes, what should be happen with the output to the process, what should happen with incoming data, um, and so on. This was changed several times because every time when somebody found something, it was changed again, there was tissue issued, but this is now as it is in the standard, and we also translated this table for us, and it is really important for us to share this know-how with you as we understood this table. We have it here, don't try to read it now, it will confuse you, but it just explains the different possibilities that we have in the standard and how it is combined. So, we have certain indications and this has to be combined. So you see, it was quite complex defined and now was the task how to solve this from a test set point of view to really assist. Also the standardization group was thinking about it, how to make it easier for you as the users. They said, mm, might be that you don't want to do this really for the single uh, protection function. You don't want you want to do something for the entire physical device. So the good old times, you had a big switch, and you said, now I'm testing. Now I'm not testing. Yeah? And this is something that is called in the standard simulation indication. So you remember when we have been talking about booths and sampled values, there was really indication: are these now the real booths or the real sampled values or the simulated one? And to distinguish, this can be done quite easy. You see, in that example, I have an IED subscribing to a certain goose, and this can be the real one, or it can be a simulated one. And now, this main switch comes into the game, so you really said, okay, I'm now changing my device to, to the sim mode, yeah, for the entire physical device, and from that moment it will start to work with the simulated one. So this is quite easy and this also works for sampled values and this is something that maybe in the future also will become more important to make it easier for the people to just to distinguish between the real signals and the simulated ones. So you see we have a lot of possibilities in the standard and now we have to look how to bring this into testing solutions and this was this was the challenge. So we really have to do it all together that in a substation it might be, I have your merging units, publishing signals, I have your bay controllers, I have the protection devices, and they all can be set to different modes, and they all can have to handle this different kind of information. Is, for instance, are the sample values issued by this test set, are this now the simulated one, or should it work? <laughs> so this is something that's defined in the standard, and now we have to see how it will be implemented by the vendors, and I want to show you how a testing solution should look like. So our proposal is that in the future, to have make this easier, that we really propose that this task to switching the different modes and to work there with this uh, simulation indication should be done by the test, by the protection testing. So you can do this with a client, of course, as well, but when you see the different dependencies that you have and you want to set it to that mode and that, and then you want to be for sure that at the end you send it back to the, send it back to the original operation, it, from our point of view, will be much easier when you embed this into protection testing. And I want to explain you how it works. So we really say that now it makes sense that I do not just only have the SCADA system or any other IEDs working as a client, I want to try this out also with protection testing. So the idea is, I, the protection test set will play something like a SCADA system, embed this into protection testing, not to take over the entire task, of course, you see, saw how complex it is, but for this little task, protection testing, to really take this over. And the idea is that you then have the possibility that what we call the whom to blame use case, that you also can say, okay, I do during protection testing also to check that the SCADA communication works properly, so I check this, and additionally, what was the main reason, I can set the ID or different function to this test mode. Yeah? So this should be done not just with a additional software, this really should be done during protection testing. Uh, and that's why our proposal is to do it like this. This sounds a little bit complicated, but it also allows me to test the SCADA communication 
And another main advantage is that I can embed this into the conventional protection testing. And this makes it then much easier if you just do this with any additional software. And another very important topic is that you can check during the protection testing the data model of the IED. What does this mean? When you look here into such an IED, then you have an unbelievable amount of information. Every information you have about tripping, measurement values, direction information is available and you can access it for testing or for assessment. So this really helps that you can say, I want to check, has the overcurrent stage now issued this information and so on. So this offers now a huge amount of possibilities. We show this you practically how it will work. Then we have there a new test module and you will in the afternoon try it out. <laughs> it's just here for the reference. So you really combine this here together. At the beginning of the test, you set the test mode. Then you perform the test as you know it. You inject the currents and the voltages. Yeah? You can work with the reports. Of course, there's no real time, but you can use the information also for assessment. Are the information published properly? And then at the end, it's very important, you set it then back to the mode as it was before. So the function that was switched on and also after the test should also be on. So this is something as we propose how to handle this complicated task. Here are just some, some pictures to visualize that, how this can be done. Yeah, you set it here to the certain mode. Yeah, and then you can work with the reports to work with the scalar functionality, inject the values, define what attribute you are going to use. For instance, you use the startup or the, the operation, say what do you expect, and then you can access the information, <coughs> everything that is available under ID, and use it for protection tests. And at the end, you have again such time signals, and then you access the entire functions as you did it here, as you see it here in the ID, or the, the report containing all the protection information, and you can say, yes, there was a trip, there was a startup, everything looks fine. So this really helps that at the end, you have that what the people want to have, and you can do this automatically, marked, everything work as it should be, it's documented, and it's safe. Good, this just should give you an idea. Another topic we want to share with you, and then of course also you can try it out yourself, is another requirement that we see for testing. So it's not just the protection testing. You also want to measure what is happening in the substation regarding conventional signals. So you still have voltages and currents. And you also want to work with the 61850 signals inside. And the idea is to combine this in a box. And then is something possible that, from our point of view, will be more important in the future. So you can observe what's going on in the substation. You can check that everything's there as it should be. You can supervise it, and you can also measure how long my signal needs from point A to point B. And this can be done with any kind of information, or that what we heard in the presentations before. This information should be measured, supervised, and um, documented what is happening there. So there is one device, you can try it out, it's called the Neo 400, and this allows you, for instance, in such an infrastructure that you really can do in your substation where the switches here are working together. You can, you can connect here, you can work with several devices, or if, you, if it's close together, then of course you have your several ports, and you really can measure what is the propagation delay for that loose issued here going to that point. Yeah? And you, there are several customers and more and more that really say, this is something I really want to know. How fast does my communication work? What is the impact of network load and how all this works together? Yeah? And that's why the idea of such a device is that you really can work also in a distributed manner to really check this. And this, of course, is especially important if you have there such a scenario where there is a wide area network in between and you really want to check how this data exchange between there works properly. So you remember the paper about the, <coughs> the solutions that we had there in the Steiermark in Austria. This is exactly something what's here, what's here possible that you really can measure there also the distributed 
even over a wide area network. And you remember then what Alex told you, we also have the possibility then to, to visualize that. I will show you a screenshot a little bit later. So you observe any kind of signal, you measure the conventional as well as the sampled values. This is very important that this will in the future more and more grow together. So you will have analog signals, you will have um, sampled values, you will have binary information, and you will have goose. So everything should be handled by test devices. This is a requirement that we see as very important. And then it can be combined, visualized, analyzed, that you really can check what is happening there, and you can try it out then in the afternoon and tomorrow how this really works. So we have the infrastructure available to really play with these devices there. Yeah. So, and Alex mentioned already that we really tried it out with such devices to do this distributed from Austria to Texas, to Houston, Texas, and to really work there with the infrastructure. And you really made here some statistic measurements to really see how long it takes, what is the propagation delay, and you see that it really worked very well. So we had 1,000 packets there, and they all worked in that time of 82 milliseconds. So we remember that idea of the transatlantic protection, or of course also possible for smaller, uh, for smaller infrastructure, that, that when you have a smaller time, of course, so you can quite quickly now communicate also using such an infrastructure as we, as we heard it. But of course, this needs to be tested. Yeah, it's again, and if customers are asking, does it work? Yeah, what do I need? And I ask them all the time, how do you calculate your bus bar? Yeah? Do you say this will be sufficient? No, they really are calculating. I have that short circuit current, and that's why I need uh, that, um, this, this bus bar. And this is the same um, here when we are working here with the, with the sampled values. We also need to calculate that the network, of course, is sufficient. And then you should test it and also supervise it. This is our recommendation, because then it really helps. Yeah. Good. Just to summarize. This picture here again, there are a lot of different tasks what can be done. We could not cover everything here in the 35 minutes. So there is also the possibility, for instance, that you also can do primary injection. Because if you don't believe in that what is happening, the last possibility is all the time try it out with primary. So really inject the current and then check what is happening with the sampled values that you receive afterwards. Yeah? So that's why we also have the possibility like that. But it's for us important that we now think all the testing cases are covered that we see with SAC 61850. So we have the GUs, we have the sampled values. And additionally, we see the need to talk with client server to do the point-to-point -point communication there with the, uh, with the devices under test. <coughs>